can't handle the truth. The American people can handle the truth. Why do we think that we can rule that country? This is American imperialism you're hearing up here. And that hasn't worked and it will never work. Who are we to tell the Iraqis? We're trying to make them the fall guy, not our stupid mistakes. Oh, it's the Iraqis won't stand up. Tell you what, pull everybody out and turn to the Iranians. Who helped us defeat the Taliban's initially? The, the war was wrong and was lost the moment we went in. This is a fraudulent war sold to the American people. You can't handle the truth. Politicians do not tell the people the truth. They lie through their teeth. You want answers! I want the truth! I am a real candidate in this debate, and I think Americans will buy into that when they really understand. Americans want to hear the truth. They're fed up with the partisanship. They're fed up with politics as usual, and that, of course, is not what I represent in the slightest. The administration is cooking the books, the intelligence on Iran. Hillary Clinton wouldn't understand propaganda if her life depended upon it, because she is all propaganda. That's her campaign. What I believe in is love, and love implements courage, and courage permits us all to apply the virtues that are important in life. Is, is, is Iran a, a threat to Israel? Of course it's not a threat to Israel, because you got some president who's shooting his mouth off. He puts his mouth in gear before his brain. What about, we had Katami, who was the president at 9-11. They helped us. They helped us defeat the Taliban in Afghanistan. And what they got as a result of that was George Bush calling him an axis of evil. Katami lost the election, and Ahmadinejad won. We put Ahmadinejad in power in Iran. Are insurgents terrorists? Hungry? Of course they're not. They want their country back, and they're fighting for it. Were the American revolutionaries at Concord and Lexington, were they terrorists? What have you of course they weren't. They were, they were fighting for what they believed in, their country. And so these people want their country back. Here, 80% of the people in Iraq want the United States to leave. We hear from our leadership, the generals and the president, saying we've got to stay there to protect those people. Are these people so ignorant? Are they so ignorant that they don't know what they need? There's, a, there's an old saying, for evil to prevail, all you need is good people to do nothing. Char Sharon, Netanyahu, these are warmongers. They proved it overwhelmingly. There are a lot of people in Israel that want peace and are prepared to trade land for peace. You can't handle the truth. You're telling the truth. They don't vote for those people. So that's what's wrong with Americans being no, no, no. They can't recognize the truth when they see it. It's, no, it's, it's more important than that. Yeah. Uh, we're stuck what could be more important than that? Empowering the people, the sovereigns. That's what it takes. Here, our government is broken. Representative government is broken. There's only two venues for change. One is where it's broken, where you go to the people, empower them to do exactly what central right. government does make laws. And when the people are able to do that, you're going to see all of this dissipate. Really? Believe me. <laughs> it's, we're scapegoating the Latinos of our society because we as a society are failing in education, we're failing in health care, we're failing in our crumbling infrastructure, and we're failing by invading countries and spending our treasure. That's what's wrong. And so I'm ashamed as an American to be building a fence on our southern border. That's not the America that I fought for. If Israel were to move, I'm President of the United States, and they talk about invading another country again, I'll put a stop to it, period. I'm going to bring peace to the Middle East, and we're going to have a Palestinian state, and we're going to have a free Israel state, and I will get it done. And none of this stuff, oh, will we support Israel? We need a leader in this country that can bring about peace. And we don't have that leader, and we haven't had one for 50 years. It's like going into the Senate. You know, the first time you get there, you're all excited. My God, how did I ever get here? Then about six months later, you say, how the hell did the rest of them get here? <laughs> and, and i got to tell you, after standing up with them, some of these people frighten me. They frighten me. When, when you have mainline candidates that turn around and say that there's nothing off the table with respect to Iran, that's code for using nukes, nuclear devices. I've got to tell you, I'm President of the United States. There will be no preemptive wars with nuclear devices. To my mind, it's immoral, and it's been immoral for the last 50 years as part of American foreign policy. You want answers! I want the truth! We're in Iraq for oil. You can't handle the truth! 
That's what George Bush wants to get control over. And when you hear the Democratic candidates and Republican candidates, for that matter, saying, oh, we'll pull out our combat troops. What really they're saying is that we're going to stay there with over 100,000 American soldiers and we're going to try to continue to control that oil. And that is what's wrong. Oil in Iraq is not worth one ounce of American blood. This is fantasy land. We're talking about ending the war. My God, we're just starting a war right today. There was a vote in the Senate today. Joe Lieberman, who authored the Iraq resolution, has authored another resolution, and it is essentially a fig leaf to let George Bush go to war with Iran. And I want to congratulate Biden for voting against it, Dodd for voting against it, and I'm ashamed of you, Hillary, for voting for it. You're not going to get another shot at this because what's happened if this war ensues, we invade and they're looking for an excuse to do it. And Obama was not even there to vote. I want the truth! That the permafrost in the Arctic is melting. And that will, by a hundredfold, be more damaging to the planet than everything that human beings are doing. And that is now in motion. Our planet, we on this planet, will not survive a hundred years. We'll be cooked out of it. And and the problem has to be dealt with as an emergency. We can get off of oil in five years. We can get off of carbon in ten years. All we need is a little bit of leadership. Just yeah, a little. And, and, you know, we should just play get out. Just play get out. It's their country. They're asking us to leave, and we insist on staying there. And why not get out? What harm is it going to do? Oh, the, you hear the statement, well, my God, these soldiers will have died in vain. The entire death of Vietnam died in vain. And they're dying in vain right this very second. And you know what's worse than a soldier dying in vain? is more soldiers dying in vain. That's what's worse. I didn't get the same amount of time as the others. And I'll tell you, I'm prepared to mix it up. I don't know why we're dancing around. The Congress is not getting us out of Iraq. Uh, and, and their whole Okay, let's views, not dance is, around, Senator. Let's not dance around. Why do people tough. like Hillary Clinton why do Hillary Clinton and the other candidates at the top, with the exception perhaps of a few of them, why are they so careful not to challenge this president's central foreign policy of war in Iraq and potential war in other countries? Why don't they challenge it? Because they are running for office and it's business as usual, it's politics as usual. They don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to rock the boat. And so they just dance around the issues and they'll keep on doing as long as you and the media keep building them up. Does that answer well, your question, Chris? The American people can handle the truth. I want the truth!